Today, we are implementing prototype methods, implementing new prototype methods. We are learning how the new operator and object.create works. And then we are implementing our own version of the new operator. Hello world, and we are working with prototypes on today's episode of Versus Code Wars. Hope everyone is having a wonderful and safe day today. Our katas today will be focused around prototypes. And we begin our warm up segment today with an implementation of the string objects repeat method. There is a built in function called repeat on strings. It repeats the given string n times, as you can see in these examples right here. And it can be very useful for things like aligning text, right, like what you see right here. Now imagine this function wasn't built in. The goal of this kata is to implement the repeat function. So let's go ahead and get that started here. As you can see, this kata solution will be implemented in a prototype function. So we're gonna do string.prototype.repeat equals function, and it's gonna take our count as the lone parameter right here. Now, as you can see, we are implementing a prototype function right here. So we can't use the ESX arrow function syntax that we have been using in our past katas. We'll have to use the traditional ES5 function syntax right here because we need access to the this keyword. All right, let's go ahead and actually console.log that this keyword here. And you'll see that this prints out our string right here. I'm gonna go ahead and type this in here, console.log. I'm gonna type in my name, Dennis. Oops. And we're gonna do repeat. We're gonna pass in four for the count here. All right, we are going to go ahead and open up our terminal here and I'm gonna run node, warm up, repeat. And as you can see, that prints out our name right here, the string right here. All right, what we're gonna go ahead and do, we are going to take this, this keyword and we're gonna put it to good use. Right now, we're gonna go ahead and do let result and we're gonna set that equal to a blank string. And this is going to be what's returned right here. And we're gonna do for let i equals zero, i is less than four plus plus i. And inside this for loop, we are going to take our result and add to it, concatenate to it our string. And our string can be referenced, as I said before, with the this keyword inside our prototype function. All right, let's go ahead and run that again. And as you can see, we get my name repeated four times. All right, let's go ahead and punch this into Code Wars to see what this looks like. And we have a problem, what's going on? Uh, I'm such a derp. I said four here. I should have said count. All right, let's try that again. All right, we are good on that. For our next warm-up kata, we are working with namespacing in JavaScript. The goal of this kata is to define a class named my class inside of a namespace, my namespace. The class constructor should accept a single string argument and it should also have a function named say hello that returns the string passed in to the constructor as you can see in this example right here. The interesting part is that my class should only be accessible via the namespace and should not define any extra global variables. Code should not redefine an existing namespace, but should also function if the namespace is not previously defined. All right, let's go ahead and give this one a crack here. Now, according to the Kata solution here, my namespace is already provided. So what we need to go ahead and do. Now, if you want to go ahead and implement a namespace inside of JavaScript, you can do that very simply with an object. We'll do const my namespace. 
and we'll set that to an object right here. Now, inside of this object here, we can go ahead and I think we can go ahead and create a constructor function like this. My class function, or rather, maybe not inside the object, but right here, my namespace dot my class equals a function that takes a string and its constructor right here. Uh, whoops, I think we'll go ahead and call it greeting. And then we'll, this class here will contain a method called say hello. And this class here should return our greeting. Let's go ahead and give that a try. This dot my object, or rather, this dot say hello. Set that equal to a function right here, and this is going to return our greeting. And that should be enough here. Let's go ahead and give this one a test run here. We're going to go ahead and copy this over from our kata example here we're gonna do const my object equals new my namespace dot my class with the greeting hello and we are going to go into this object here and call the method say hello all right let's go ahead and test this out here node warm-up namespace and we do not get anything because we actually need a console.log that. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this inside a console.log call here. And we get our greeting here that says hello. All right, I think we can go ahead and give this one a try here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this over here into our Kata solution. I think this is what they're looking for. So. We're gonna go ahead and run the tests here. Those pass, and we are good on that. For our next warm-up kata, we are implementing another prototype function here. This time it is the array objects reverse method. When this method is called, it reverses the order of the items in the original array, and then it returns that same original array. Now this array is modified the reverse method modifies the array object on which it is called. So let's go ahead and give this one a try here. We're gonna do, this is gonna be another prototype function here, array.prototype.reverse, and it's going to be a function and it takes no arguments here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do a console.log down here. One, two, three, four in an array here. Actually, I think this would probably be better illustrated if I did this const, or rather, yeah, const array equals a one, two, three, four. And then what we'll go ahead and do, we're gonna do console.log ar.reverse, and then we are going ahead and console.log arr right here to illustrate how this method modifies this array right here. All right, let's go ahead. And I imagine this is going to involve us doing a little swapping here. All right, let's go ahead and for let I equals zero. I is less than. I would imagine math dot floor. This dot length divided by two plus plus i right here. 
All right, we're gonna go ahead and set a temporary variable here. And we're gonna go ahead and set that to this. Now, how do I reference uh, elements using the this keyword here? I would imagine this dot length minus I plus one here. And then what we'll go ahead and do this at I, or rather this dot length minus I plus one equals this at index zero. And then this at index zero will be equal to our temp right here. I think that's how this is gonna work. And then we go need to go ahead and return this array here. Let's go ahead and test this out here. Clear, node, warm up, reverse. Three, two, four, one. That is not what we wanted to see here. All right, let's go ahead and console dot longer i here. I and r this dot length minus i plus one. We're gonna find out what's going wrong here. Zero three. One, two. Eh, because we're indexing the array at index zero and not at index i, that's the problem. Let's go ahead and try that again. And we get our reversed array, four, three, two, and one. Let's see what happens, however, if we introduce an odd number here, odd number of elements here. We get our five, four, three, two, one. Let's do six, seven, eight, and nine here. Uh, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That is what we want to see. Let's go ahead and punch this into Code Wars to see what this looks like here. Whoops. Hit copy, paste here. All right, we're gonna run the tests. And we are good on that. For our next warm-up kata, we are implementing yet another array object method. This time, we are implementing the map method. All right, the map method takes a predicate function and it runs this predicate function on, on every element of the array on which map is being called. And the result of this method here will be a new array of the elements returned by map's predicate function right here. For example, given the array one, two, three, if we were to call the map method on this array and pass into it to this function here, which takes an element and raises that element to the second power, we would end up with a returned array with the elements one, four, and nine. All right, let's go ahead and give this one a try here. Once again, I think we're dealing with yet another prototype function here. So array.prototype.map. And we're gonna set this equal to a function that takes a predicate our predicate function as the lone argument here. All right, what we are going to go ahead and do, we need to go ahead and keep track of our result here because this does not modify the original array. We're gonna have to create a new result array and return that. And we are going to iterate over each element of our array. Let i equal zero, i is less than this dot length, plus plus i. And what we are going to do, we are going to do result dot push. And we are going to push into this result the return of this predicate function right here. We're gonna go ahead and call our predicate. And we are going to pass in First, our element here, the element of the this array at index i. Now, the map method also takes two other parameters here. The second parameter is 
the index of the element being processed. And then the third argument is the array itself. We're going to pass in this right here. Now, let's go ahead and give this one a test run here. We are going to go ahead and do one, two, three. We're going to run that through our custom map method. And in that, and that predicate function is going to take our element as the lone parameter and is going to take that element and raise that to the power of two. Uh, we are going to go ahead and console.log that result here. And we're going to clear the terminal here, node warmup, not map, and we get the array one, four, and nine. All right, I think we are ready to punch this into Code Wars to see what this looks like here. All right, we are going to go ahead and run the test here. And we are good on that. For our final warm-up kata of the day, we are implementing a singleton pattern. The singleton pattern is a design pattern that restricts the instantiation of a class to one object. This is useful when exactly one object is needed to coordinate actions across the system. The goal of this kata is to create such a pattern right here. So, what we're going to go ahead and do... We're going to go ahead... We're gonna, first, we're going to hit train here. And we are going to do this. Class uh, Singleton. First, we're going to check the node version here. I th think this will work. And we are going ahead and go ahead and do a constructor here. First, we are going to go ahead and check for the presence of an of me class member object called instance. If this dot underscore instance then we are going to go ahead and just return that. Otherwise, we need to go ahead and create this here. We are going to go ahead and do that by doing this. This dot underscore instance will be set to this. And we are going to go ahead and actually I have another idea. We'll put this in our if statement here. We're going to put this in the bottom of our constructor right here. All right, let's go ahead and test this out here. All right, we have another member right here. We're gonna call that one test. We're gonna go ahead and call that one test and we're gonna set it to one. This dot test equals one. And it's interesting to note that this comparison here equals true. All right, let's go ahead and cop. Let's go ahead and copy these. And we're, we're going to go ahead and run this through Node to see what this looks like. All right, we're going to go ahead and console dot log this. I probably expect this to print out false, and ex in fact, I do. Um, wonder, if, wonder if class is actually support. I just wonder if I actually need to implement this as a function constructor function here. Let's go ahead and try that. Cuts or var singleton equals function. We're gonna do if this dot underscore instance is undefined. We're gonna do this dot underscore instance equals this. And probably from there. Now Maybe this dot test equals one. And I think we just go ahead and return this here dot underscore instance. All 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and console.log obj1.test. And we get one. What about obj2 test? And we also get one. But this is still returning false. And I'm going to figure out why here. I'm going to be right back. Give me one moment. Now, I am familiar with the single ton pattern. I have worked with it a lot in C++. I've just never worked on it in JavaScript before. This is how I went ahead and implemented this right here. I have a class singleton right here, and in the constructor, I have this if statement right here that checks to see if a static instance of this singleton class is in place here. And if it's not, we put it in place right here, and we set its members right in here. All right, then we're going to go ahead and return that instance right here. I'm going to go ahead and include a link to the documentation on singleton classes in JavaScript in the description box below. All right, let's go ahead and test this out right here. We're going to do node warm up singleton. And, that's going to, and we in fact see true right here. And we have our test set to one. Let's go ahead and punch this in the code wars to see what this looks like here. Actually needed a little help with this one here. Let's go ahead and run a test. Actually, there are no tests implemented here. So we'll, so we'll just go ahead and hit attempt, and we are good. That concludes our warm-up segment today. I will see you in the next kata. In JavaScript, the array object has a method called for each, which allows you to iterate over the values of an array, executing a predicate function upon each element. In this kata, we will be creating our own version of the for each method, which works just like that, except for one difference. If the predicate function returns true, then the loop inside for each will stop and no additional elements will be processed. Let's go ahead and give this one a try here. We're going to do array.prototype. This is going to be another prototype function, just like in the warmups. Array.prototype.each. And we are going to pass in our predicate function right here. Whoops, needs to be a function. We're going to pass in our predicate function as the loan argument. And what we are going to do is we are going to iterate over each element of our array here for let i equals zero. i is less than this dot length plus plus i. And what we are going to do inside this for loop here we are going to do an if statement here. If predicate. If we, if we call predicate and we pass in our ele array element here, the index and the array itself, if this returns true, we'll break out of this loop here. All right, what we're going to go ahead and do, we are going to test this out here. We're going to grab this array from the Kata instructions here. We do a comp. We are going to set up an array here. Const allowed letters. We're going to pass. We're going to set that to an empty array. We're going to go ahead and const letters. We're going to paste this array in right here. And what we're going to go ahead and do here, we're going to test our prototype out here. Letters dot each, and we are going to pass in our letter and our index right here. And what we're going to go ahead and do, if letter is equal to the lowercase d, as you can see, we have this lowercase d right here, we are going to return true here. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and push this letter into our allowed letters array. Whoops. Dot push. Actually, we're going to go ahead and push in a pair. We're going to push in the letter and the index of the array just to make sh make use of our array index right here. And at the end of that, we're going to go ahead and console.log our allowed letters. Whoops. Our allowed letters right here. All right, let's go ahead and test this out here. All right, node array for each. As you can see, we get the letters A, B, and C as well as their indices right here, as we specified here. All right, we are going to go ahead and punch this in the code wars to see what this looks like here. 
All right, we are going again. There are no tests right here, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit attempt, and we are good. Now you may have noticed that the kind of solution that I implemented here is awfully similar to an array object method called a sum. The sum method also takes a predicate function, and that function is run across each of the elements of the array on which sum is being called until it runs into an element of that array that would cause the predicate function to return true, upon which the method would stop processing the elements of the array and return. What I could have done in our kind of solution here was to return the return value of this dot sum passing in our predicate function. The new operator in JavaScript creates objects by following the following steps. First, it creates a new empty object. Next, it sets that new object's underscore underscore proto underscore underscore property to match the prototype property of the function being invoked. Finally, the operator invokes that function and passes the new object as the this reference. Using this understanding of the new operator, the goal of this kata is to create an instance of the object my object without using the new operator. All right, let's go ahead and give this one a try here. As you can see, our object is already created here. So we're going to set my OEJ, and we're going to set that equal to an empty object here. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do, it says here that this object's proto property matches the prototype property of the function being invoked. So we need to create a function here. We're going to do function, and we're going to call it my object. I'm going to set that to an empty function body right here. And we're, we're, what we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to go ahead and set the underscore underscore proto property to my object dot prototype. All right, what we're going to go ahead and do from here. Finally, the operator invokes the function, passes the new object as the this reference. So what I think of this should do, all right, we're gonna go ahead and test this out here. Uh, console.log, my type of my OBJ. And we're gonna go ahead and run this into node here. Node how new works. And set the object here. How about, my obj instance of my object. Eh, it is set to true. How about my obj dot my own property undefined? Okay, we gotta have a prototype method in here, I think. All right, let's have a look at this test here. Must be built with the my object constructor. So let's go ahead and give that a, let's go ahead and uh, do that here. This dot my own property. I'm going to set it to my name here. Nope. My prototype method. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, let's try this. My object that prototype dot my own property. Set that equal to Dennis here. Would this work? Yeah. Okay. There I'm on to something here. 
How about... My object dot prototype dot my prototype method. I'm going to set that equal to a function here. I think we're going to go ahead and call back to one of our warm ups here. We're going to do this dot my own property dot repeat four times. And we are going to go ahead and console.log that right here. My obj dot my prototype method. Let's try that here. Yeah, undefined. Uh, thought I was on to some here. All right. Let's do console.log my obj dot has own property my prototype method see where we're going wrong here yeah okay how about Oh, right, we need to return this. Okay. All right, how, okay, so we'll just go ahead and return true here. And finally, we'll go ahead and uh, console.log my obj instance of my object and that returns true okay I think we're ready to punch this into code wars to see what this looks like we're gonna copy paste this in here we're gonna run these tests here and we are good on that in this kind of solution I made use of the underscore underscore proto underscore underscore keyword do not do this. This is slow and it's deprecated. I will include a link to the documentation on the proto keyword on MDN in the description box below. Instead, have a look at the better code solution of the day. Pay mind to the code that you see to my left here. First, we create a new variable called my, my obj and we set it to the return of the object.create method, which here creates a new object from the given object. In this case, the prototype object of the already provided my object function constructor. Next, we take that constructor function and run that through the bind method. The bind method is called upon a function and it returns that very same function but with a new this context, which is the one passed in. In this particular case, we create a new version of the my object constructor function. But the this context for that new function will be the my obj object that we created before using object.create. On the subject of object.create, in this kind of solution, we are going to be implementing the object.create function. What does it do? The signature of object.create looks something like this. I'll call your attention to the kata instructions right here. The function takes two parameters a required prototype object and an optional properties parameter here. Prototype has to be a non-primitive value like an object or null, but not undefined. If a bad value is passed into prototype, we have to throw a type error. The optional pr properties parameter can be of any type or, or it can be omitted at all. As a result of the execution, object.create will return a newly created object with inner property prototype right here, set to the value of the prototype parameter. If the properties parameter is passed in and is not undefined, then the object.create will make a call to object.define properties, which takes the object and the properties here, where object is the object to be returned by object.create. 
The goal of this kata is to create our own implementation of object.create that acts like the original version and assign it to the object.create ob variable here. To access the inner prototype property of object, we have to use the aforementioned underscore underscore proto underscore underscore keyword. Now, I, am, I said in the previous reflection that this was deprecated. I am going to be using this anyway here. All right, let's go ahead and give this a try. First, let's first let's see how the original object.create works. I have this object here with a couple functions here. It's called citizen and has two functions here, sleep and panic. Now I have this object here called veteran, which is set to the return of object.create. And we pass in citizen here as the original prototype. And then for our properties, we have this object here with one key panic with whose value here is set to this function right here which returns the string snafu now running i have these calls to console.log here which calls our citizen.sleep citizen.panic and veteran.panic right here i'm going to go ahead and run this through node to show you what this looks like with the original version of object.create node object create and as you can see as you can see our citizen dot sleep returns this string our citizen dot panic returns this string but then our veteran dot panic returns this string right here our goal here is to implement our own version of this let's go ahead and give this one a try here all right So, if I'm, hmm, I'm perfect about this. I think the object does have a prototype itself, right? Citizen dot prototype. I'm gonna go ahead and console dot log that here, just to see what that looks like here. Console dot log citizen dot prototype. Is that legal? No, it is not. Okay. Okay. What we'll go ahead and do. We're going to go ahead and create an object here called a result. We're going to set to that. We're going to access that prototype inner property with the dot dot proto underscore underscore keyword. And we're going to set that equal to our prototype here. And then what we need to do, we need to, first we need to handle the edge case here. If type of prototype is not equal to an object or prototype or and prototype is not equal to null we'll go ahead and throw our type error here expected property to be an object or null. All right, from there, we'll go ahead and create a result object. We'll set the inner prototype here to what we pass into prototype here. And then what we need to do, if properties is specified and is not undefined, we're gonna go ahead and return this result here but in between that, we're gonna go ahead and check to see if type of properties is not equal to undefined. We will need to go ahead and run object that define properties. All right, object on which to We're going to go ahead and pass in 
our result and we'll go ahead and pass in our properties. So I think this is how it works. Let's go ahead and test this out here. I'm gonna clear our terminal here, node object create. And we have a new implementation of our object create. Just to make sure this is not calling the original version of my object create, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this my create. And I'll go ahead and call my create instead right here. Yep, and we do have a working version of the object.create function here. Let me explain what's going on here. I'm going to go ahead and first get rid of uh, the my underscore here. This is our implementation of the object.create method here. And this is a function that takes two parameters, the required prototype object and an optional properties object. First, we check to see if the prototype that we pass in is an object. If it is, and excuse me, first we check to see if the prototype that we pass in here is an object or null. If it's neither of these, we throw a type error that says expected property to be an object or null. Next, we create an object here called result. This object contains one key, which is the underscore, underscore, proto, underscore, underscore keyword. And this is set to the prototype object that we pass in here. Next, we check for the presence of the properties parameter here. If this is not undefined, then we had to have passed something in here. We call the objects define properties function here. Passing in our result object right here, and then our properties object right here. This is going to inject our prop, our properties like this right here into our object right here. Finally, our object here is returned here. And as you can see in our terminal, this does work. So let's go ahead and punch this into Code Wars to see what this looks like. I'm going to be including a link to the defined properties documentation on MDN in the description here. I'm gonna go ahead and punch this into Code Wars here. We're gonna go ahead and run our tests. And we are good. Now, I said in the reflection before this one that using the proto keyword is slow and deprecated. Here is how to implement this particular kind of solution without using that keyword. Have a look at the object.setPrototypeOf function. This function takes two parameters. The first is an object, the prototype of which we wish to set. And the second argument is an object we wish to set that prototype to. According to MDN, this is a more proper way of setting an object's prototype than using the controversial proto keyword. I will include a link to the documentation of set prototype of on MDN in the description box below. For this kind of solution, we are implementing a brand new method for the array object. We are to add a new method to the array.prototype called group by, so that elements in the array on which group by is being called could be grouped by the result of evaluating a function on each element. This method should return an object in which for each different value returned by the function, there is a property whose value is the array of elements that return that same value. If no function is provided to this method, the element itself should be taken instead. I will call your attention to the examples here in the Kata instructions. First is a call to this method with no predicate function. As you can see, the elements themselves are the keys and the occurrences of that element in an array are those keys of values. Now in this second example here, this is the group by method called with a predicate function, in this case returning the remainder of the value passed in divided by three. Now in this, the keys here are the return values of that predicate function called upon each of the elements. And in the arrays here, which are the keys values, 
we have the elements of the array that were passed in to that predicate function. All right, let's go ahead and give this a shot here. All right, we're gonna do array dot prototype dot group by, and we it's gonna be a function that takes an optional predicate function as the lone argument. Now, this function will behave differently if no predicate function is taken in. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna go ahead if, we're gonna go ahead and keep track of a result. And we are going to set that to the return of a ternary operation here. If predicate is provided, then we'll set that equal to the return of that predicate function. Predicate. I know, you know what? Yeah, I think we need to do this inside of a for loop here, actually. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and keep track of our result in any event. Set that equal to null initially. We're gonna go ahead and run for let i equals zero, i is less than this dot length plus plus i. And what we're gonna go ahead and do, or I better call this predicate return. And then we'll go ahead and set our result to the object that is going to be returned at the end. All right, what we're gonna go ahead and do inside this for loop here, we're gonna set our predicate return equal to the outcome of a ternary operation here. If our predicate was provided here and it's not undefined, we're gonna go ahead and set our predicate return variable to the return of a call to our predicate function. And we're gonna pass into this predicate function the uh, current element, the index of that element, and the array itself. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and just set this, pre otherwise, if uh, no predicate function was given, we're gonna go ahead and set this equal to our element right here. All right, I th think, all right, what we'll go ahead and do from there. We need to set, we need to index our object up here, our result object up here at the key of this predicate return. And we need to set this to our element right here. So result at predicate return. And we are going to set that equal to this array at index i. I think a better way to approach this here would be to do the following. Instead of check, instead of merely checking to see if predicate is defined, I want to check to see if the type of our predicate is equal to the string function. All right, let's go ahead and test this out here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab these two arrays from Arcata Instructions here. We're gonna do console.log. I'm gonna paste this in here. And we are going to go ahead and test this out here. We've got our terminal here. We're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the size of this here. We're gonna do node array group by. Oh, okay. Yeah, I kind of need to rethink that a little bit here. If. Predicate. If result at the key of predicate return is present inside the object, we'll go ahead and do this. Result at predicate return dot push and we're gonna go ahead and push our element right here. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and do result at predicate 
return equals, we'll set that equal to an array with the element as its lone element inside this array here. Let's go ahead and try that again here. All right, as you can see, we have each term, each, each element here in our array here is keys, and each of their occurrences showing up here in arrays, which are values mapped to these keys in this object here, as seen in the Kata instructions over here. Now let's see what happens when we introduce a predicate function into this method here. We're gonna, I'm gonna pass in a value here, and just as the Kata instructions say, I'm gonna have this predicate function return the remainder of val divided by three. We're gonna test this out again. And as we can see, we have uh, zero set to an array with three and six, one set to an array with one, four, one, and one, and two set to an array with two, two, and five. So these keys are the return values of the predicate functions and these arrays contain the numbers that were passed in to the predicate function that we gave this method. All right, I think we're, I like what we're seeing here. Let's go ahead and punch this into Code Wars to see what this looks like. I'm gonna run these tests. And we are good. I don't have really much to say about this kind of solution except for the fact that I had fun implementing this one, and I think I might have more than a few uses for this one going forward. Earlier on in this episode, I went over a little bit on how the inner workings of the new operator works. Here, we are going to be implementing the new operator. The new operator is intended to create instances of a constructor function or a class. To be more precise, the operation new constructor with arguments passed in, as you see in the Kata instructions here, does the following. Number one, it creates an empty object, which we will call instance, which prototypally inherits from constructor.prototype. Number two, it binds the constructor function to instance, meaning that this context of the constructor function is instance, and then calls the constructor with any arguments passed in. Number three, if the return value of the constructor function is an object, like an array, function, date, regular expression, and whatnot, the operation evaluates to that object. Otherwise, the operation evaluates to our instance. Consider this example right here. I have a simple adder right here. This adder is a constructor function which takes two arguments, which are two numbers here. And these two numbers are set to the first and second variables in this constructor functions this context here. Here we have a function in adder's prototype called sum, which adds together these two numbers right here. And here we have a constant called my adder, which is set to a new instance of our adder with the arguments three and five. And then we have a console.log to a call of my adder dot sum, which should add three and five together. Running this in node, it sh this uh, operation should give us the sum of three and five, which is eight. In this kind of solution, we are going to be implementing our own version of the new operator with a function called nouveau, which by the way is French for new. This takes one function parameter, which is our constructor function, and any number of additional parameters that that constructor function will need. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, write a function up here. Function nouveau. And it's going to take our constructor function and any number of constructor uh, arguments. Oops, did I put an equal sign there? I did not mean to do that. Anyway, what we'll go ahead and do up here, we're gonna do just as the Kata instructions say here. First, we're gonna go ahead and create an empty object. And do call it instance. Next, we're gonna take our constructor we're going to go ahead and I think we do something like we're going to make use of the object to set 
prototype of method here. And in that, we're going to go ahead and pass in our instance and our prototype, which will be constructor function dot prototype. I think that will work. Let's see if it complains at all here. We're going to go ahead and first comment this out here. And then we're going to go ahead and replace this new adder here with new vo. We're going to pass in our adder three and five for our arguments here. We're going to go ahead and try this here. All right. It's like a uh, no doesn't yell at us for that. So I think we're on the right track here. Anyway, what we'll go ahead and do, we're going to go ahead and create a variable here called bound constructor. And we're going to go ahead and set that to the return of constructor function dot bind. And we are going to, no. Yeah, I think it's constructor function dot bind. Yeah. And we are going to bind our instance to this function as it's this context. And then we are going to uh, pass in any arguments that were provided up here. So we're going to do dot, 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 constructor args. Now we are going to go ahead and call this constructor here. And if it returns anything, we're going to return that, whatever it returns. Otherwise, we're going to re return the instance here. So if we're going to go ahead and... Uh, Bound, call bound, create a variable called bound return, and we are going to call our bound constructor. Keep in mind, our constructor args are baked into our bound constructor thanks to our call to bind here. And if we are going to return one of the following here, we're going to return if the type of our bound return is equal to an object, such as an array, a function, a date, a regular expression. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's undefined. If our, the type of our bound return is not undefined, then we'll go ahead and return our bound return. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and return our instance. All right, let's see how this works here. All right, note it does not yell at us for this. All right, we're gonna bring our, back our console.log here, and we get eight, just as we did with the new operator here, with our nouveau function. All right, I think I like where we're going here. Uh, let me go ahead and hit train first. Let's go ahead and punch this into Code Wars, and we're going to see what this looks like here. All right, our test pass. And sure enough, we got a little bit of a problem here. Ah, don't be fooled by type of null. Don't be fooled by type of null is a primitive of the type null, not an object. So we'll, all right. So what we'll go ahead and do, we're gonna go ahead and take this, I'm gonna check for maybe for multiple different types. If type of, on return is equal to not not is equal to null or type of a bound return is equal to undefined or maybe I have a better idea if bound return whoops come on if bound return we'll go ahead and return our bound return Otherwise, 
return our instance. Let's see how we like doing how let's see how it likes this. Alright. I think that test passed there. Alright, our string literal. How about this? If bound return and type of bound return is equal to an object. Uh, that takes care of one more. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and take this, copy this into our local solution here. Oops. I'm gonna go ahead and encapsulate this statement here inside of a parenthesis. We'll also check for if type of bound return is equal to a function. All right, let's try this one on for size. And we are good. All right, what we're doing here, we're checking to see if our bound return is present. It's not null or undefined. And then we are checking to see if our bound return is either an object or a function. If we do that, we return our bound return right here. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and return the instance that we set the prototype of up here. All right, with that all said and done, we are good. With this kind of solution, there are three distinct instances where I could have killed two birds with one stone. First, I could have set the instance object to the return of the object.create method, passing in the constructor function's prototype. Number two, instead of creating the bound constructor function with the instance as the this context and the constructor's arguments, and then calling that bound constructor function, I could have done both with a single line using the function.bot, or apply, excuse me, or function.call methods. Number three, I could have taken the return of the call to the bound constructor function and compared it with the return of the object constructor passing in that result. And if those two were equal, I would return the bound constructor function call return value. Otherwise, I would have returned the instance instead. And that is going to do it for today's episode of Versus Code Wars. If you like this video or you learned something new, Drop a like and subscribe to this channel to see me take on more coding challenges on Code Wars. As always, if you think there is anything I can do to improve on my code for the better, feel free to drop a suggestion in the comments section below. Also, if you are a Kata author on Code Wars and you would like to share your authored Katas with me, feel free to drop links to those Katas in the comments section below as well, and you might see me tackle those Katas in a future episode of Versus Code Wars. I hope you have a wonderful and safe day, and I will see you on the next episode of Versus Code Wars.